Hey everyone, Zamarox26 here and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 3 of our Let's Build series. We're going to go over some terraforming, some custom trees, and we're going to do a little time lapse of this medieval bridge. I'm so excited for this one, so let's get into it. Um, starting where we left off, we're going to be finishing up some terraforming here. We're going to be um, naturalizing this whole area. Um, if you want to know some of the commands that I used in order to get all this terraforming done, if you check out my last um, episode of this series, all the commands you're seeing used now were um, given throughout the course of the video, um, including the one where I'm adding this nice gravel, cobblestone, and um, stone combination along here to make these, these really rocky looking cliffs. Um, one thing that kind of um, inspired me for these cliffs was thinking about some of the old school Hunger Games maps. Um, I'm talking maps made about like five years ago. Um, I really love the look of a lot of those maps, so I was really inspired by those when I was um, making some of these design choices. Um, but as well, um, we have to build up some of this mountain range here because when I added these cliffs, um, these mountains became too short and as well, eventually we're going to have to add some more mountains in the backdrop of this, but that's for another day. Anyway, here are some of our trees. So we're starting off with this very large tree. Um, and I was really inspired by a lot of like fantasy style trees. Um, so I really want to go for a fantasy spruce type of um, lightly, lightly dense forest. Not super dense. Um, that might be something that we build later um, in the series. But um, for now, I'm keeping everything... Um, it's not quite revealed yet but anyway so we're building this tree and um i'm doing it kind of thick because that kind of reminds me of a lot of these fantasy trees it's not going to be hyper realistic or anything like that um but if you do want to make hyper realistic trees one trick is to use um a few different types of leaves as well um and to leave a little bit more air in between the leaves and to not make them as dense as i'm making them um, and you can definitely um, scatter different textures in there. You can even use um, multiple types of logs and whatnot. But um, for our build, we're doing this super fantasy style. So the leaves are gonna be dense. It's gonna be kind of winding up the tree, um, kind of in a spiral shape, um, but somewhat natural looking still. Um, and as well, we're gonna be building um, basically five different sizes of these trees, um, but they're all gonna be thematically and you know, the same materials, whatnot. Um, and you're see, I'm seeing that I'm basically using the same method, but I'm just shrinking um, each tree as we go along. So this is gonna be like a medium large size tree. We're gonna wrap around with these leaves yet again. Each tree that I build gets faster and faster because it's smaller. So you're basically seeing, you know, almost the same exact tree, but just smaller. Um, and we're just working away all the way up, just kind of covering these different branches and whatnot until we are, um, all the way up to the top and it looks nice enough and we have to think about how these trees are going to look from all angles because one way we're going to kind of um, manipulate this is by rotating the trees so that it doesn't look like they're super copy and pasted throughout the map so that's kind of one way one trick we can use to kind of hide that a little bit although to any of you guys watching this series you guys are going to be in on the secret so my secret's out so we're building this medium sized tree it's obviously a lot smaller than the last two it's pretty straightforward gonna build these kind of smaller trees um, out here and kind of one reason why I want to use these different sized trees is not only just to have um, a little bit of a diverse forest with different sized trees but also because we're gonna be making use of some kind of optical illusions and hopefully when we paste these trees then you guys can really um, take that in and let me know if this actually works or not because my idea was just to have these large trees kind of more in the foreground as you can see we're pasting in now um, and if you ignore some of these little um, pasting issues, we're going to fix them real quick. But um, yeah, my goal is to have these large trees kind of in the foreground, a little bit away from the castle and kind of toward these cliffs. And ideally, we kind of, as we move further into the background and behind the castle, the trees get smaller and smaller. And hopefully that optical illusion will really make it seem like those mountains are really far away and quite large and will also make the castle as well kind of pop a little and seem bigger. So I don't know exactly how effective that'll be, but you guys can let me know in the comments and I'm really excited to hear all your guys' feedback about this because I'm really excited about this series. This is definitely um, a 100% passion project um, and I really hope that uh, once it comes to fruition, it'll just be 
really fun to play, really fun to explore, and all those kinds of things. So yeah, we're kind of just pasting in more trees. You can really see how I'm doing it. I'm rotating each of the trees around. Um, and one way we can make sure this is pasted correctly is to paste it without using air, um, which is going to be the double slash paste. And then we're going to use the minus symbol and then an A. So that'll paste it without air. And then as well, um, we're just pasting more and more trees of these medium sized ones along these cliffs. And these kind of medium sized trees are um, really good to mix in with the larger trees. And then you guys are really going to see kind of more of this optical illusion as we start pacing in these smaller trees way into the mountains. So I think we'll be getting into that in just a moment. So we're starting to paste some right next to the castle and as well some off to the side of the castle on these little mountains here. And you can already kind of see a little bit of the difference in and kind of the illusion this kind of creates. And I think that's really exciting for this build. Especially some of these mountains already look like they're very far apart just because of how they're designed and some of them are actually a little bit um far apart but once we add these tiny trees in on the background I, I really think it'll make a big difference and let me guys um let me know if you guys think um that this does make a difference or if it doesn't or if you have any suggestions or any kind of comments regarding this process um i want this to be you know somewhat collaborative um i would think that's why i'm kind of showcasing this whole process on youtube so yeah, as you can see, we're pacing some of these really tiny trees up there, way at the top of these little hills, and way up on that far mountain over there. And it really makes this whole thing look so um, big, you know, it makes those trees look so far away. And that's really that really was my goal in this process. Um, so anyway, now that we've finished pacing in all of our trees, we're going to work on this uh, nice medieval bridge design. Um, so we're using some uh, andesite blocks. I believe um, it's a little interesting in this texture pack, um, but anyways, we're using some of that and then we're going to be adding some stone bricks on top and we're going to be um, spacing them out like this so that we can add nice arches in the middle of them. And at first I made this and I decided it was a little too thin, so we're actually going to make it five blocks wide instead of three. So um, once we've done that and we've made it a little bit longer, because I really want this to be a long bridge I want you to really walk over it I just kind of want that effect of when you spawn into this world um, you kind of have to walk down this path and across the bridge toward the castle that's just really I think that's a really cool way to start a map um, when it just brings you in here and you're supposed to go explore this castle and you're supposed to figure out why you're here um, and I think that I love that and it kind of um, one kind of thing that really inspired me was kind of thinking of Skyrim the beginning of the game Skyrim where you come in on this wagon and you're trying to figure out why am I here what's gonna happen to me um, and then you have to explore this whole world and I kind of love that feel so that kind of inspired me a little bit um, but yeah so we're building this bridge we have our arches already kind of made in here we have um, our slabs coming in on top um, so we're using pretty much a like monotone kind of colors here, using lots of grays, um, lots of stone materials. And that kind of goes with our castle pretty much as well. Um, and I kind of, I love using kind of similar block palettes depending on the world, because I think if you use similar structural ideas um, as well as like blocks, it really brings together an entire world of builds. And that's how you see these mega builds being made by like dozens of people. And it's just shocking how cohesive these projects can be. And it's really because they managed to pick a few themes, a few, few ideas, and they managed to pick out um, a block palette. And that, that works really well. Those just a few things makes a huge difference when you're make, thinking of these large projects. So yeah, so we added these walls on top, but I decided to change them actually into slabs. And I actually think that makes it look a little bit more connected with this castle because those are the kinds of things that I tend to put on my castles. I tend to put like slabs alternating like that. So it looks like um, a bit fortified. So that was kind of one theme that I used to kind of connect these two builds. So maybe by yourself, if this build um, was, was something that used a lot of cobblestone walls, maybe you want to keep the walls in there. But because we use a lot of slabs like that in this castle, it makes sense to use um, these slabs just to keep it all connected and whatnot. Um, and as well, we've textured a lot of these cracked stone bricks in here, and that really adds a lot of detail in there as well. So now that we finished this bridge, we're going to add a path going along. Um, so this is going to be like the path that you 
get when you use a shovel on grass, um, but we used a world painter brush in order to uh, speed up this process. And then as well, we're adding some slabs so that you can just um, walk down pretty easily. And then because this path kind of sticks out a lot or feels a little out of place, one way we can kind of solidify it with its environment is by adding some of this gravelly stone um, path on the border of it. And I kind of, I love the way this looks because I think it makes the path itself stand out more. And it almost looks like as if carts and people were walking all over the middle of it. So that part got a little more worn out than the rest of it. And I think that's a pretty neat, neat effect. So I don't know, that's one way you can interpret it. But anyway, we're kind of spamming some bone meal in here, but I wasn't a huge fan of all these different kinds of flowers. I think it kind of is too uplifting almost for this kind of energy because this map is going to take place kind of in the in twilight and the twilight time of day. So what we're going to do is um, remove all these flowers and change them with the corn flowers. Um, and we're only going to leave the corn flowers behind. I love those kind of blue flowers. But anyway, so we finished this time lapse. And um, in our fourth episode, we're going to announce the second mega build of this adventure map. And I'm really excited about that. Um, anyway, so we're wrapping up this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. It was really fun adding all these trees in, adding the bridge in, and finishing up some terraforming. Um, this is pretty much the one third mark in terms of builds for this adventure map. Obviously, we still have to go over the interior and whatnot but really excited about all the progress we've made and I can't wait to show you guys what's next. So I'll be seeing you guys next time and this is going to be the end of this episode. Peace.